Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to be looking at DR Raters. I'm going to show you three different DR Rater designs. I'll show you all of the connections and the systems associated with DR Raters. I'll explain to you how they work, and then I'll tell you exactly why we have DR Raters in the first place. If you're working in the power engineering industry or most industrial settings that use steam systems, then you're highly likely to encounter a DR Rater. A deaerator has three main purposes. Its primary purpose is to release non-condensable gases from the boiler feed water. Its secondary purpose is to heat the incoming makeup water before it's sent to the boiler and to heat the condensate that's returned from the steam system before it's sent back to the boiler again. Its third and final purpose is to allow us to store a certain amount of water that can be sent to the boiler as the steam demand on the boiler fluctuates. So it gives us a storage capacity of boiler feed water. When we're talking about non-condensable gases, the two gases that we're most interested in are oxygen and carbon dioxide, also referred to as CO2. These non-condensable gases are present in the boiler feed water and are referred to as dissolved gases because they are dissolved into the water. The problem with having oxygen in the boiler feed water is that it can lead to corrosion. The problem with having carbon dioxide in the boiler feed water is that it makes the water more acidic. A typical boiler will use feed water that has a pH value of between 8 to 11. So if we have excess CO2 in the feed water, we're going to have feed water with a lower pH and this is not desired because it may lead to corrosion. So in order to protect our boiler and a lot of the components associated with the boiler, including piping and valves, we need to remove as much oxygen and CO2 from the boiler feed water as possible. A typical deaerator will be designed to mechanically remove oxygen down to a level of about 7 parts per billion. Any oxygen that remains after being stripped by the deaerator will be removed chemically. These oxygen scavenging chemicals are typically sodium sulfite and hydrazine. Let's now have a look at our first deaerator design. I'll explain to you exactly how it works and how we can get those non-condensable gases out of the boiler feed water and how at the same time we can increase the water's temperature in order that we don't thermal shock the boiler when we send the feed water to the boiler. So here's our first 3D model of a deaerator. I'll do a little spin so you can have a look at it. You can see it's horizontally orientated. It's actually a pressure vessel, although the pressure associated with the deaerator is quite low. You're looking at about 0.5 bar, which is about 7 psi, and the temperature of the deaerator should be approximately 105 degrees Celsius or 217 degrees Fahrenheit. Pressures and temperatures do vary based upon the deaerator design. Let's have a look at the systems that the deaerator is associated with. We can see here we've got a condensate inlet. This is a return from the steam system. When the steam has done its work and given up its heat, it's going to condense and we're going to need to return that condensate, that water, back to the deaerator where we can increase its temperature again and remove some of those condensable gases if they're present before we send it back to the boiler. So that is a steam system return or condensate inlet. We have a steam and a gas vent, that is this connection here. Although the deaerator is under a very low pressure, as I mentioned before, about 0.5 bar or 7 psi, sometimes a little lower than that. We actually have a vent that vents to atmosphere continuously, and this vent allows us to constantly vent the non-condensable gases that are being liberated from the water. It's not possible to separate the non-condensable gases from the steam in an efficient manner, so what we do is we actually allow a bit of the steam to escape with the non-condensable gases. For this reason, you'll often see a little bit of steam always escaping the deaerator vent. 
and this is normal. You have to be careful that you don't vent too much steam because this would be a waste of energy. But at the same time, you also need to ensure that you're removing all of the non-condensable gases. If you don't remove all the non-condensable gases, what will actually happen is you'll have a area inside here that is full of non-condensable gas, or we'll say air, and this is known as air blanketing. If you have air blanketing, then it is very difficult to reduce the oxygen and CO2 levels of the water to an acceptable level. Let's go over here and have a look at the next connection. We've got a steam inlet over here. We use the steam to heat up the water within the deaerator. This is low pressure steam and sometimes in a power station it will be exhaust steam from the turbine. It is a heat source. As we increase the temperature of the water inside the deaerator, the solubility of the condensable gases, the solubility of the dissolved gases, reduces. That means as we increase the temperature, more oxygen is liberated from the water and so is more CO2. So that's exactly what we want. So we need to increase the temperature of the water until we come close to the saturation temperature of the water. The saturation temperature is the boiling point. We don't want our water to boil because we want to keep it in liquid form but we do want to get it to within 2 degrees Celsius or 2 degrees Fahrenheit of the boiling point. If we can do this, then we are massively reducing the amount of oxygen and CO2 that will be present in the water. And at the same time, reducing the likelihood of corrosion because we're removing the non-condensable gases. If you like this video, then please do like it or share it on social media. We really do appreciate it. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about deaerators, then check out our Introduction to Steam video course or our Introduction to Deaerators video course. Thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you on another video soon.